What's going on everyone, Tutorial Tim here, and today we're gonna to be going over building out the bottom navigation, and there are only two variants on the bottom navigation, and it is the portrait version and the landscape version for the, we're gonna be designing that for the Android-based format, and we have the resource to the documentation, so you can open up that link, and if we go ahead and click on it, clearly the bottom navigation allows movement between primary destinations in an application. This is crucial and very common, uh, and it's used in every application, whether you're using Facebook, mobile on your phone, whether it's iOS or Android, or you're using YouTube, or you're using uh, some sort of Google application within the Google suite. And I highly recommend you just reading through all the contents, just like every other video, to really understand in depth what these components do, um, everything associated with those elements, and also the research behind that, and also understanding the states and how you interact with this. So in Figma, I've taken screenshots of the specs. And one thing to note that's very important is that the minimum width of the container for each button is set to 80 dips and the maximum width is set to 168 dips in width. So you'll notice that they're both utilizing the, the minimum width specified here, 80 dips wide. And on the portrait version, portrait being if we create a frame and I go ahead and select Android, I now have my Android version. So I'm just gonna type in, I'm gonna label this properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in bottom navigation space slash space uh, portrait. And once you've labeled that properly, I'm going to also duplicate that and set this type in landscape and once you've specified landscape, now that landscapes, this is landscape, so we're gonna design for landscape here. And we're gonna go ahead and start by kicking off this party by specifying the height of this, it's set to 56 pixels. And it has this bottom app bar, the elevation in the diagram. You can look at it yourself to verify if you don't believe me but the elevation by default set to eight dips. So um, what you'll notice is that, say I had another frame here and I detached that and I just went and re-specified that this was the material design sized frame. Um, and I went ahead and just uh, Android, just labeled that Android portrait and you'll notice that this is the bottom navigation set to portrait here and that the content is clipped now because the parent frame has that checked. You won't see the drop chat on the other sides. So now we need to go ahead and start adding in the content. So what do we have? We have these three icons here, but those will live inside a, a specific containers. So these icons are set to 24 dips wide and in height and are centered on the axis here. So if I go ahead and select these three, I can go ahead and ensure that these are horizontally centered and then space them accordingly. And what you can do to ensure that is that it's, it's centered within a 120 pixel frame uh, 120 dip wide frame. So what we can do if you're confused is since this is 360, 360 divided by three is, set, is 120 dips. So all we have to do is wrap a frame around each of these icons, set the width to 120 and the height to 56. And what we want to do is I hit option W and A to snap it to the top and left. And then if I hit enter and hit option V and H, it will center that perfectly on the screen. Um, and then we can do the same exact thing for this one as well. So I can actually detach that now that it's centered its position with a padding of 48 to the left and vertically on the Y axis. So all I gotta do is wrap this in a frame, set that to 120 pixels wide and the height to 56. I'm gonna hit option W so this snaps to the top. And then I'm going to act, going to uh, horizontally center this and then hit enter and hit option V and H to center that within this frame. 
So you'll notice that this is 120 pixels wide and so is the section to the left of it. And what we can do is, now that that's centered, is I can ungroup that frame and I could even apply just the spacing here um, just to double check or I could wrap this in a frame again if you're not that confident want to be extremely precise set the width to 120 the height to 56 and then hit option D so this snaps to the left and option W so it snaps to the top of the parent frame then I'm gonna hit enter now I have my icon selected hit option V and then H now that is centered within the 120 dips wide frame and it's 48 pixels away from the next icon and I can ungroup that now in my layers panel and now everything is centered accordingly so now I have my icons properly centered in the bottom navigation. So one thing we're missing, of course, is this typography. So we can go ahead and reference the documentation once more. And it shows you that this type, we can check the typography in the theming and it uses the caption style. So with that caption being used, um, the, the baseline is 12 dips away from the bottom of the icon frame, which is a great thing for us to reference. So if we go ahead and now create a text style, I'm gonna go ahead and create this text style and label that, whoops. I'm just gonna type in featured, set that resizing to auto width, apply the text style, caption, and uh, ensure the fill is set to on primary and ensure that is in all caps. And I'm gonna double check, whoops, it's not all caps and I wrote the wrong thing, excuse me. It's labeled favorites, duh, should be paying attention here. And essentially what I'm gonna do is with this line height set, uh, with this baseline, I'm gonna just center this in the center of this by moving it. You'll see that it snaps, gives me that red arrow indication. I'm gonna move this up and see I have this red line here that I'm gonna apply to the bottom of the frame and I need the baseline to be set to 12 pixels. Right now it's set to 11 on the baseline, our, our baseline set to 11, so if we, we need to push that down one pixel, um, which leaves a pixel gap from the top of the icon's outer bounding box. So now we have the baseline set to 12. So that is fantastic. And we can also reference again our typography here. What we're gonna need to do is actually select this icon and we can go ahead and group this and then I can hold option V and this will actually center that content. And then I'm gonna ungroup it again. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that this ali the alignment of the text is set to center so whenever a user renames it, it just is automatically centered in that component. So they don't have to deal with uh, messing with alignment and whatnot. That could be very irritating. So now that that is specified, we are good to go. And you'll notice that when the text is applied, it pushes up the icon and the icons that aren't currently active stay uh, vertical vertically centered on the axis um, with that text being applied it takes that into consideration and calculates it and then centers it vertically with the icon plus text so now that we have that variant created we can go ahead and just create that as a main component now we have a our lands our portrait main component so we can go ahead and actually duplicate this throw this into our landscape variant. I'm gonna rename this to landscape and detach this instance with the shortcut key option command B. And what we can do is ensure that we have proper constraints applied to this. So with this example, it's utilizing the entire width of the landscape uh, version of the Android phone here in this frame in this example. So what we can do is manually ensure that this is correctly being applied. And by doing that, we need to make sure that these, we have 
three boxes set to 168 dips wide. Um, or if you have some other better way of calculating it, um, please do so, um, as this is the best way I know. Everything's vertically centered, as you can see. But what I'm gonna do is the same approach we did with the portrait version. So I'm gonna set the width to 168 dips, set the height to 56, and snap that to the top and to the right, and select my icon, hold down Option VH, make sure that's centered. So we have this implemented correctly. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for, for this next one. And I'm gonna snap to the top and horizontally align it to the center. So now I just need to do that with the icon as well. Now that that's applied, we, can, we want to snap this. We want the edges of each of these frames to snap next to each other because it's centered within the middle of this, with the middle of this landscape variant. So I'm just doing the same exact thing, just reapplying these values. I'm going to make sure that this text and this favorites icon are grouped as well and center that within this frame. And then I'm going to snap this to the top and then push this over until it snaps. See that red line? Now I have all three elements aligned accordingly. And I can go ahead and ungroup these properties as needed. So I'm gonna ungroup those frames and so just utilize those to measure this perfectly or properly. And with that said, we now have all of this aligned properly and we are good to go. Um, but all we need to do is ensure that we make this a main component. So that is our main component. And now all we want to do is go ahead, we could even throw this frame in here as an example of, of each format, or you could just, actually we just wanna go ahead and throw this in there as is. So that is all I have for you today, folks. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.